Well, 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 what do we have here? A Zero motorcycle on the Yammy Noob channel? Ooh, this isn't gonna end well, but this video may actually be a little different than you thought because this is Zero's very last chance to impress me. Now, I've ridden the SRS, the SRF, and we may have made a certain video that kind of blew up and I have a little story about that later on in the show, but this motorcycle was sent to me by Chris, my good buddy over at Eurocycling, and I said, Yam, this is the latest hotness, this is the best, the latest and greatest from Zero. I think this one will change your mind about the company and about the brand itself. So, a lot of hype to live up to on this Zero DSRX motorcycle, the Adventure Touring Spec from Zero. Why don't we jump right into it? But first, let me explain about that checkered past. Today's video is supported by Voom Insurance. I'll tell you more about them later in the show. So guys, as I've mentioned, I've ridden the SRS, the SRF motorcycles from Zero, and you may recall that we made a certain video last year detailing our gripes with Zero. Key among those were that we thought the bike was a little overpriced, a little underwhelming, and most importantly, those dang microtransactions from the Cypher store. We thought that the EA sportsification of motorcycling was kind of a bad trend. However, Zero has done a big brain move and they've included all of the Cypher 3 features already on this motorcycle. As far as I understand and from my research that I did on this bike, there are no performance add-ons or any microtransactions you can apply to this motorcycle. All the Cypher 3 features are already loaded into this thing. So you get the heated grips, all the power, all the battery, there's nothing locked away behind a paywall, which is pretty sweet. So with the DSRX, what you see is what you get, and that's what we like in motorcycling. Now, Zero is a very small company out of California. They've actually never really been all that profitable either from what Chris has told me, and so they're kind of fighting this big fight to make electric vehicles in today's world. It's no easy feat considering all the American labor they have to pay into, but I'm gonna call a spade a spade, and what they did with the crazy microtransaction stuff in the Cypher store wasn't really to my taste, but it's cool to see that they are evolving. Now, this DSRX is a little different from the SRS and the SRF models. Let's go over the specs on this machine. So this Zero DSRX is sharing the basic same battery frame and motor from the SRS and SRF models, but it's a slightly different frame. So same 17.3 kilowatt hour battery, same motor. The frame has been slightly reinforced for off-road duty and the swing arm's a little different as well. The electronics are mostly the same. However, they've added an off-road traction control and ABS system. Now up front, the DSRX does have a few differences. It has a 19 inch front end with an optional spoked and knobby tire package. This one has the cast wheels with the more street oriented tires. The suspension is slightly longer as well, allowing you to kind of trundle over rocks and gravel a little bit easier. Features this windshield and the hand guards as well for added wind protection. In terms of power, the Zero DSRX is making a claim to 100 horsepower and 166 foot pounds of torque. Now, I own a Turbo Hayabusa with 165 foot-pounds of torque at the wheel, and I've ridden a Rocket 3, which makes upwards of 160 foot-pounds of torque, and they are kind of lying a little bit about those torque figures. I don't know what it is with electric motorcycle manufacturers. The torque figures are never quite right from what they claim versus what you feel on the bike, which I will show you guys in the vlog as well. This motorcycle comes up with a curb weight of 544 pounds, so that is definitely up there with the kind of flagship ADV territory, but the seat height is only 32.5 inches, making it pretty approachable for people to ride. This isn't a super tall motorcycle, so if you are a little vertically challenged or you simply have a shorter inseam, you will be able to ride this pretty easily. Now the elephant in the room is of course range. Now, lucky for you, we have actually tested the SRS and the SRF models and they got 82 and 89 miles respectively in our real world range test going from 100% down to 5%. And I would estimate that this Zero DSRX would probably get something similar if you were to go out and ride. Now again, remember electric motorcycles when they're stuck on the highway pinned at 70 to 80 miles per hour, their range goes way down. So if you were to try to actually do some proper adventure touring on this motorcycle, and go slab on a highway, I don't think it would make it very far above 75 miles. Price for this thing is $24,495, so a little bit of a spicy meatball, but remember, you're getting all the features from the Cypher 3 store, and there are no extra add-ons that you could make to this thing, as far as I could tell from my research. Now, before we take this bike out for a spin, let me tell you about our sponsor, Voom Insurance. But guys, let me ask you a question. Do you feel like you're paying a fair price for your insurance? 
Do you feel like if you own several bikes or it's frozen where you live for five months out of the year that you should be paying the complete and full price for your insurance? Well, Voom doesn't think so. They think that a pay per mile solution is the right choice for many riders out there. If you're not riding that many miles or if you have a multi-bike stable or you just don't get out and ride as much or it's too cold where you live half of the year, Voom could be a great solution for you. They have policies as low as 50 bucks a year and could save you 60% on your insurance. Voom is only available in these following states which I think I'll have to call upon past Yam to help me out with that one. Voom is only available in these current states, Arizona, Ohio, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Oklahoma, Wisconsin, Missouri, Texas, and Tennessee. Thanks, Past Yam. Now, Voom is expanding to several states, so click the link down below and get yourself a free quote with my link and see if Voom could be the right choice for you. I recently switched all of our giveaway motorcycles and I'm gonna be saving a ton of money. The best part about Voom is that there's no hardware or software required to track your miles. All you need to do is take a photo of your odometer. Now check out Voom Insurance in the links down below and let's go take the Zero DSRX for a spin. All right, folks, on the road with the Zero DSR X. And what do I make of it so far? Well, dynamically speaking, this is one of the better Zeros that I've ridden, honestly. Um, I didn't think it would be because it has the 19 inch front end and the kind of heavier 544 pound curb weight from this kind of adventure option. But honestly, this package makes a lot of sense in this adventure touring configuration. It leans into the dad energy here. I feel like this motorcycle makes a lot of sense for the kind of performance that it has and the kind of setup that it has. And it's really working for me, honestly. Um, I think Zero's done a commendable job of transforming this thing into a much, you know, much better bike than it was before in the SRS and the SRF, because it's not trying to be anything it's not. Now, I will say, the regenerative braking and the front brakes don't feel fantastic. I've noticed that uh, I've had to really add a lot of pressure to the lever to engage some stopping power. And again, I do have more mass. I have about 540 pounds I'm working with. So as the bike rolls forward, when you brake, uh, it does feel like it requires a lot of input to actually get it to come to a stop. It is powered by some pretty large calipers and some pretty high quality calipers, but I just still think that the braking performance is, uh, you know, a little, a little dicey. And, you know, Zero's done a really good job of turning the electric platform into a very natural feeling experience. That's the really hard part of electric bikes is creating that throttle to rider connection and making the bike feel like it's really doing something, you know? Now, the thing about electric motorcycles that still trips me up is obviously given that there's just one rotating part, uh, you know, you feel a lot more through the motorcycle's chassis and through the front tire. And sometimes that can be cause for alarm. Like I'm, I notice every undulation, every pebble, every piece of rubble on the road. And I do feel like I have a much greater sense of what my front wheel is doing. Like over this rougher pavement there, I, I really genuinely feel the difference in the different kind of pavements. Um, that's actually really interesting. Now I have the bike in standard mode here because I am trying to conserve the energy a little bit. There's always a little bit of range anxiety on these motorcycles and obviously pinning them wide open constantly through nice twisty roads like this is a quick way to drain your charge. Now, I will be taking this motorcycle on road, off road, and then I'm gonna go to a charge station just to see how it goes, try to charge this thing up a little bit before I head back to the shop. I do believe I have enough range to get back to the shop and complete my loop today, but I do wanna see what the experience of charging the bike is like. So side to side here, the bike works really well. You have these large wide handlebars providing you a good amount of leverage over the machine, meaning that when you want to tick it into corners, you just kind of set the line, add gas, or throttle rather, because there's no gas, <laughs> and it seems to be good to go. I think for an adventure touring style bike, it's very commendable what it's doing. I've definitely ridden worse motorcycles than this in this category in terms of the handling components. And again, Zero has done a much better job in the handling department on this thing. It actually feels more like a real motorcycle than the SRF or the SRS that I've tested, honestly. And the power is nice. 
You know, I think 166 foot-pounds of torque is a little ambitious, you know? These electric motorcycle manufacturers often claim these ludicrous torque figures and, you know, wide open, you know, even in standard mode, that should be giving me about 100 foot-pounds, let's say. Let's drop it 60 foot-pounds because I'm not in sport or canyon mode. But it just doesn't end up feeling like uh, such a high-powered motorcycle. And that's okay, you know? This kind of feels more like a Africa Twin or a Tiger 900, that sort of power. It's not flagship ADV power. This isn't nearly as fast as a Pan America or a BMW GS 1250. Um, this motorcycle feels more in line with the middleweight category. It's certainly peppier than something like the Touareg 660 or the MT-07, or rather the Tenere 700. And so you do get a little bit more punch and uh, pizzazz from it. Let me see if I can go ahead and crack it into sport mode here. Let me see if I can do off the throttle. Or do I have to be stopped to change modes? Oh, um, that's the blinkers. That would help if I press the right button. Sport, canyon. All right, we're in, we're in canyon mode now, which I think is the most aggressive. Try to flick this into corners a little bit. Let's see what this thing does. Tip it in. Add a bit more gas. It's very bizarre being on an adventure touring style electric bike because I really have very little sense of my speed, which can be very dangerous for beginner riders. As you see, we're coming into this decreasing radius corner. I think it's marked at 20 miles per hour. And, um, you know, if you are a beginner rider and you have all this windshield protection and you've never ridden a high powered motorcycle, I really think you can outride this bike really easily. Uh, so this is not an entry level bike. I mean, obviously the price would indicate as such, but you know, I really think that this is a motorcycle that requires quite a bit of experience to ride because of those factors, you know? And, and that's the funny thing about electric bikes is because you think that with the lack of a clutch and um, you know, the ease of riding, so to speak, ease of maintenance, it would be more palatable to entry-level riders, but honestly, this is not an entry-level motorcycle in any way, shape, or form. Obviously, the price precludes it from that, and you would see that, you know, a $24,500 motorcycle is pretty pricey, right? That's not really entry-level, but I think the dynamics of this bike also really put it in that kind of intermediate to maybe even expert level, in my opinion. Now again, we're in canyon mode here, flicking the wick wide open, 160 foot-pounds. I really don't think so, you know, I, I really don't think so. It feels like about, about 60 to 70, I would say, maybe 80, maybe a liter bike torque, maybe, but then there's no top-end rush, so there's none of that either. So I, I would say take the power figures with electric bikes with a grain of salt, you know? They are never going to be what they claim, in my opinion. Never. I don't know how they get those figures, but it's just, it's just not quite right. And I was actually watching Zach Court's review of the Saunders motorcycle, and I think he said the same thing. He was like, eh, this does not feel like what they quote. And I had to do a little bit of research and understand why, but yeah, at this point, that's definitely the case. The throttle response is very good, honestly. Uh, it's much closer to the Livewire 1 that we've tested, and uh, that's kind of the gold standard for electric motorcycles for me. That's a fun, sporty bike that can do a lot and feels really good and feels more natural. But this motorcycle is getting really close, you know? It's a bike that's getting really close to uh, the natural feeling of a motorcycle. But at the end of the day, I just feel like there's still this kind of soul-crushing sadness when you ride an electric bike. Like I'm poodling around here. And it's just, it's not satisfying. <laughs> I have to be totally honest. I think it works well when you give it in the right context, right? Like we're in canyon mode and we're trying to rip up twisties, doing the things that sport bikes would do because the bike is allowing me to put it in a sporty mode and Zero claims this is a fun, sporty adventure bike, adventure touring style bike, right? It's cool, good, that's, that's awesome. But I think that, you know, it just leaves a little bit to be desired. Let me see, if I let off the throttle here, if it will fully engage in canyon mode. It's still blinking at me for some reason. Do I have to select it? 
Okay, now I've selected it. Maybe I wasn't in cannon mode. That's a little more punchy, but not much. <laughs> yeah, okay, it's got it's got a little more juice in canyon mode. I think I was still stuck in standard mode because I was between modes back there. But even here, we're wide open. You just get, it's it's like this weird capped performance effect. Because you don't get to grab gears and have it keep pulling. It's just it's very non-intuitive because you rev it out, tech rev it out, you know what I mean? You get the speed up. And it just peters off and off and off and off, and it's super unsatisfying. And that's and that's my gripe with electric motorcycles writ large, so that is not a diss on this particular model, the DSRX. But it, it is a little sad, I don't know, like, it just doesn't really make me that excited to ride it. But again, because this thing leans into the adventure touring, boring kind of bike thing, sorry people, but it's true, uh, I think that it is more successful because of that. I feel like this bike is successful over the SRS and SRF because it just leans into what it's supposed to do. It's like, yeah, freaking plug in your Garmin navigation or your charger, uh, you know, try to try to plunk down as many big miles as you can or just commute back and forth to, to work or school or whatever. I don't know why you'd be riding this to school and work is the more adequate uh analogy there put on luggage on it you know and this is all of a sudden a nice grocery getter a nice sort of thing like that but at twenty four thousand five hundred dollars i would just buy a corolla or a prius or something as my grocery getter you know but yeah on-road impressions pretty decent i would give it a, a good six out of ten for those um i think that zero has done a much better job with these motorcycles but they're still you know at the end of the day, it's still an electric bike, and it doesn't really have that much pizzazz. How about wide open throttle here? Rear tire feeling a little squirrely on there. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's decent. It's decent. It's, it's not, <laughs> it's not rip your hair back, but, you know, pretty good. All right, folks, let's go and get this off-road and see the prowess of the DSRX a little bit on the off-road side of things. All right, folks, little off-road test with the DSRX. We've got it in standard mode and an off-road mode with off-road TC and ABS. And, uh, okay, so first things first with an off-road style bike, you want to check the standing position. Let's see if we can get it to dance a little bit. Eh, kind of. Um, standing position's good. So I'm about 5'11". I've got a pretty slim build, about 165 pounds. Got a, I think, normal size arms. This is a little more rutted than last time. Um, and yeah, I like the standing position. If you're looking very confidently stand on this machine, you can tip it over really easily. See if we can use the power to get it to pivot a little bit. Yeah, kinda. <laughs> so the coolest thing about electric bikes, off-road specifically, they have a really big advantage. So if you have really sophisticated algorithms and software, you can actually really manicure the power on these things and deliver perfect power to the ground. Because what you're doing off-road really is managing rear wheel slip and grip all the time, right? And front wheel too, right? But you know, they often say that, you know, over 20 horsepower is just wheel spin in the dirt, and it's kind of true, so in standard mode, this thing with maybe, I don't know, 100 foot-pounds of torque, the off-road TC is going to have to do a really good job to try to keep everything in check. So, you see here, I mash on the power, and it's probably thinking about a million times a second, not literally, but maybe a thousand times a second, <laughs> and trying to make sure that we get the right power down. So, we'll go right here in this little corner, mash on the gas get it to spin a little bit and it's very peculiar because i don't hear anything and i just feel the dynamic of the motorcycle like it would be off-road so it's a very peculiar experience riding a very big adventure bike like this 544 pounds ready to ride in this context so i had a little more gas here get our sighting lap there we'll kind of add a little more pace here i am not an off-road expert by any means this is my least skilled discipline that I operate in but you know it, it's really cool riding these bikes off-road the electric bikes because you don't have to focus as much on clutch control or other stuff you can literally just think about a little bit of rear brake and mostly throttle you got the regen braking too so you know you could probably get away with not even any throttle you can just ride it like a big scooter pretty much and honestly the suspension's doing a pretty commendable job 
on these rougher bits, like all this kind of loose rocky stuff here that I've got. I'm actually really impressed with how the suspension's coping with that. Now this tire it's probably inflated to about uh, 32 psi and it's very road biased it doesn't even have any knobs on it and yet you know for a little casual trail ride like this i'm doing pretty well now the elephant in the room obviously is what kind of charge stations are you gonna have out in the middle of nowhere you know i know a lot of you guys out there maybe not watching this video but maybe you came across it you're gonna put fuel canisters on a T7. Maybe you got a Desert X with the auxiliary tank. You wanna go plop down 300 miles, no problem, self-sufficient, all that good stuff. And this motorcycle can't really do that. So what exactly is it relegated to? Well, it's a little tough, right? I guess like out and back trails, because you still need to come back to a charge station. And right now, charge stations really only exist in developed environments, you know, in suburban or maybe exoburban areas, you had a charge station. So I don't really get the use case for it, to be perfectly honest. If it's a adventure long distance bike, I could kind of see it as a long distance touring bike. And to be honest, a lot of adventure bikes are relegated to that nowadays too. Um, they're not really designed for massive heavy off-road duty as many people will try to tell me that they go and do single track with their BMW GS I don't really care <laughs> um, You know, it's the type of bikes where a lot of people are just taking them out and uh, Enjoying them in the long distance capacity and this thing can't really do long distance either You know, it can't do long distance. You can't really ride it to the trails Which is the whole point of an adventure bike is you ride long distances with it you get through a big section of uh you know dirt and gravel or whatever it is so it's a little hard to make the case for it honestly but you know evaluating it as an off-road machine uh i think it's pretty decent i'd maybe give it a five or a six out of ten it's not as dialed in as a pan america for example a pan america is really well dialed in for off-road duty uh surprisingly so but i think for zeros kind of first attempt at a big adventure bike they've done a lot of dual sports stuff um you know they could have done a whole lot worse it's actually pretty decent i think the off-road tc works pretty well you can see here you mash on it it lets you lets you have a little bit of fun without getting too crazy because obviously the bike is pretty fast for an off-road bike supposedly uh it's got a lot of speed so with all that being said, let's go and try to charge this thing a little bit and then let's get back to the shop and wrap up our thoughts. Alright guys, I'm at the charge station. I uh, have no idea how this works. Never done this before. We're going to give it a go. Uh, do I have to pay anything? Let's see what happens. Plug it in. It's at 49%. Okay, we got time left to full. It's dropping, dropping. Let's see. Please be under an hour. Gotta be, right? Oh. <laughs> an hour and 11 minutes you'd have to wait here to get to full charge. That's not terrible, but it's also really not great. It's not great to waste an hour of your life just sitting around waiting for something to get back to full charge. Um, that's not awesome. I'm really glad I have, it says 57 miles of range. That'll easily get me to where I need to go, which is lunch and then back to Yemen Ube HQ. <laughs> but yeah, I know that some superchargers uh, will obviously bring this time down because they provide more power. This is a Tesla charging station is what it says. Uh, I don't know if 6.3 kilowatts is the supercharged amount. I don't know, but an hour and 11 to charge off of 50 is quite extreme. So I will be unplugging this bad boy and uh, being on my merry way, thank you very much. Because if I was in a gas-powered vehicle, I would be over there, and I'd get gas. It'd take me about five to ten minutes, and I would leave. So, yeah, not great. Well, I'm up to 50, look at that. <laughs> uh, let's get this back in the shop, and let's wrap up this review, shall we? So wrapping up my thoughts on the Zero DSRX for today, I think it's still a bit of a flawed motorcycle. The whole idea of this thing is that you go out and tackle big miles, but unfortunately, as you guys saw, you need electric charging infrastructure and a lot of time to recharge this thing. I think with a given range of about 75 to 90 miles going on a big highway, it just doesn't really lend itself that easily to do its designed task. 
However, the bike does feel pretty good. You know, you ride it on a twisty set of roads, you ride it off-road, it does everything very commendably. And I do have to give a big shout out to Zero for not continuing the Cypher Store microtransaction thing. It's really cool that this motorcycle just comes with everything you need already there, ready to go. It's a premium experience and they're not nickel and diming you for every little thing. So I do think this motorcycle is a big improvement over past Zeros that I've ridden. I think that it works really well for this adventure touring segment and this is a good fit for this motorcycle. I also think that the electric powertrain lends itself very well to off-road riding. We've seen that with the Altas and the Stark Vargs and other off-road electric vehicles and that you can manicure the power putting down to the ground through the tire through the software. So I'd love to see a version of this bike maybe 10 years in the future where we have even more charging infrastructure, a smaller slimmer battery and a much longer range and then all of a sudden this makes a lot of sense and it would be nice if the cost came down to under 20 grand but all things considered this is a big improvement for zero and a big move in the right direction big shout out to eurocycle for sending us this motorcycle we really do appreciate it thank you to zero as well for helping supply this bike they did not pay or get involved in the video in any way shape or form i want to put that out there and also a big shout out to our sponsor for today boom insurance Thanks so much for watching the video. What do you think about Zero? What do you think about this DSRX? Remember to leave a comment down below and hit subscribe if you haven't already. I'll catch you guys in the next video. See you later.